just by posting every day, I've literally managed to scale in within six months a really good amount. I, I wanted to work with you and I'm like, sorry, I get hundreds of DMs every day. I don't have the capacity right now to answer every single one of them. I try to and I would love to be able to. How are you, Kat? Great, thank you for having me on. How no, are you? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, I'm good. And we've got George with us today, some work experience. Yeah, hello. You've been dragged into it, haven't you? Yep. You are now, you'll like it. It's fine. Um, but we always do start at the start. Um, so, school. So, what was school like for you? School. I feel like most like entrepreneurs have like this great story about how they just hated school and stuff. And mine was similar. I wouldn't say that I was bad at school, mm. I wasn't the best, but it wasn't where I excelled. Um, I enjoyed some of the subjects, but it just, the tests and stuff, I just wasn't very good at the tests, you know. Um, so, not to say didn't do well, mm. um, but I also went through a lot of, like, bullying, and yep. um, obviously, I think a lot of people do um, when they, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs do. And so, um, for me, like, in primary school, I was very introverted, and so I yep. was, like, reading a book and stuff like that all the time, and even though I was kind of, like, still mixing with, like, the popular kids, I was still, like, quite introverted. Um, and so, like, gradually, as I progressed through high school, I started kind of um, becoming more confident mm. and um, started coming away from my introverted days and um, kind of started being a bit rebellious, I think, around, like, year 7, 8, so, like, 11, 12, 13, um, and um, and then I, I got moved to another school, uh, mm. a private all-girls school. That sounds like fun. <laughs> it was not. It was not. And this is actually the first time I've talked about it publicly, mm. uh, like, on a podcast. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people look at me and they think, like, oh, all these things, you've had all these privileges. But, actually, we did start from a very different point. And so, like, even, like, my mum, she's worked her way up to get to where she is right now. And, like, we didn't start with all these things. We, yeah, like, yeah, we grew them, which I'll get into later. Um, but as far as like school again, um, I, I was moved to this all girls private school. It was horrendous for a while. And then I kind of somewhat enjoyed it mm. um, purely because I was actually like excelling at school. Like I was doing well finally um, because I'd kind of hung around with like the kids that were just not really doing much. And then um, obviously I moved into actually doing stuff. Um, and so from there, I, I started enjoying it. But then I think around year 10 because I moved in year 9 a good year year 10 started getting bullied by like 20 people we had 20 people in our year group just 20 people and all of them were horrible to me um there were a lot of people who were nice individually and but as a group you kind of they, they're just a bit quieter aren't they they don't say anything because they don't want to get in the middle of it which is fair enough um but the majority of them were really awful to me um and it was quite sad. And don't get me wrong, there were parts of it which I can see why, like, you know, there'd be there'd be moments where they'd, like, cause a commotion and, like, I probably wouldn't help myself in that situation. I'm not saying that I'm completely innocent. Throwing <laughs> books at them and stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. But I did kind of, you know, I'd, got, I'd get angry with them being mean to me. And so I just, I'd kind of, I think one time I lashed out a little bit in terms of like, I put something on part of my story or something, obviously. Snapchat. Based, yeah, literally Snapchat <laughs> at the time. Like, how do cool. Do you use Snapchat? Huh? Do you still use Snapchat a lot? Yeah. Yeah? Is that, do you use that, like, as a primary form of communication? Yeah, pretty much. That's a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> everyone does it, like, school, so I do as well. Yeah. I use text and WhatsApp now. Yeah. You're matured. I, I <laughs> You're growing up. My thing about Snapchat is you get your, your memories on it. Yes, so that's if I, I delete love it. it then I, I, I lose all of that. And I yeah. used to be obsessed a bit yeah. when I was your age. Yeah. yeah I used I'd rather use like uh, like messages and WhatsApp, but it's just everyone else does. So Yeah, I get that. Do you, is your, uh, last time I saw your phone, you had like hundreds and hundreds of snap streaks. Oh and my stuff God. Like that. Yeah. But no, but no, but like it would be people saying like um, streak. Yeah, so I remember doing that. Oh no, now it's just like I actually message people. I want to message them, not because yeah. I want to have a little fire emoji. <laughs> you've grown up, you've matured, I'm proud yeah. of you. But it's funny you say about books as well, because like when I was younger, I would not read a book. Yeah. I, I'd hate it. And what I used to do was, I, you know, I baited myself out last season for this, but my mum only found out then. What she would say is, like, oh, if you read in, like this whole book, then like, I'll get you the football boots that you want. And I'd go online and like, find the blurb about it, and, like a summary, and I'd read all the summary. <laughs> and then I'd like say to her, I'd make like, a PowerPoint presentation, I'd like, go all out with it. 
explaining everything that happened in there. She's like, oh, like, well done, amazing, and everything like that. And I was like... Wow. Yeah. So you're a true salesman then, huh? Was, yeah, liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it, basically. Yeah, but so I think school, school's a funny one as well, because I know you said about that, but I, I hate school. Like, I used to play football manager on my laptop, because I'm yep. dyslexic, I was allowed a laptop. So oh, I always okay. just, your mum's going to tell me off giving you ideas, but <laughs> I used to have it and then like, I was a different screen and I would just quickly switch screens and be like, oh, I'm a really slow typer, I'm, tr- I'm struggling <laughs> to understand and then I got, obviously really got really bad grades. Which oh, at school we just have it all blocked so you can't do anything. Yeah, uh, but I have my own laptop now. and it was oh, an app we on get, the We laptop. get ones given to us. See, they've, they've at no, at our school, they blocked stuff on the Wi-Fi, so you couldn't do that. But then we found a way around it with a VPN. Oh, yeah. We, we used oh, to have yeah. all the different, like, torrent websites and stuff yeah. like that. We had lots of international um, students, like those like, Russian students and stuff, and they would just, like, show us, like, all the little ways to get yeah. around it and wow. stuff like that. I, I think I got one of the school computers hacked because I downloaded an autoclicker to play Cookie Clicker. Oh, my God. One of the school computers in, like, year seven. <laughs> I don't even feel like I want to know what that is. So, all in all, school was awful, but actually... Looking back, th- I got a lot of good experiences out of that that I can then bring forward into what I'm doing now. Mm. What do you think the main purpose of school is? I have this debate with so many people. I think from an outsider's sort of point of view of like where I am now, I'd say to shape us into the perfect employee. Fine. Okay. That I think it's all about soft skills, like how to make friends, like that kind of... Yeah, but they don't teach you that. And I don't think that... Like, I think they need to teach you more soft skills. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I feel like they should also teach you certain things like tax and VAT, those yeah. kind of things yeah. as well, which they obviously don't cover at all. But I think like the how to deal with people, that that kind of stuff there, I think that's what, for me, school is all about. I mean, I, I can't tell you what cloud it was or Pythagoras theory. Yeah, we were debating yeah, yeah. this yesterday. <laughs> I've got the thing about that. I don't know anyone that's ever used it. Have you ever used it? I've never used it, no. There we go. Should be taken out. But, yeah, <laughs> so I, that's my whole thing about it. I think it's really good for learning out the people skills and everything like that. But mm. I can't remember anything except of mice and men. That's the only thing I remember <laughs> when someone gets killed. And everyone used to write it on the first page, didn't they? Yeah. Did you have that at your school as well? Yeah. And then, like, it just ruins it straight away. And, yeah, it's not it's not ideal. But so then you, you left school and then you did an apprenticeship, didn't you? Yes. I went straight into an apprenticeship. I thought, I can't be bothered to do any more education. Yep. I just I was contemplating it. I did get accepted into a, like a grammar school that's near me, um, but I decided to go for the apprenticeship route. So I found an apprenticeship in marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, when literally the week after I broke up from school, I didn't have a summer holiday. I just went straight into the apprenticeship, um, and then kind of worked my way up from there. I guess yeah. so. Various different marketing and sales positions. Obviously, the two go hand in hand quite nicely, mm-hmm. and um, and then. As of April 2021, I started the business. Okay. So um, it was actually during like the pandemic, which a lot of businesses set up. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So I was in the travel and tourism industry at the time. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you know where I'm going with Can't this. Wet in its a little bit. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So um, a lot of this got made redundant, and so um, I was kind of looking for a, for a, you know a new job. I had an apartment at the time as well that I obviously like I owned by myself so I had to be paying these bills and I was very stressed as like 18 19 year old me Mm -hmm. um and so um from there I managed to find a job I think within about a month or so which in hindsight is great but at the time I didn't know that that was going to come about yeah found a job was there for six months their business plan went down the drain so again stuck it out again had to try and find a new job Mm-hmm. So you can imagine this process of like constantly being stressed about everything. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then I found this one job that I was finally really excited about. They pulled me through like four or five different rounds, which is very unheard of, as you probably know. Yeah, I think the most we've had is seven for a client. Seven? Seven. Most average about three. Yeah. Two to three. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. quite normal. So, um, So they were making me like make spreadsheets and stuff to kind of like show them what I could do I suppose Mm -hmm. and um so it was quite advanced it wasn't just like getting to know you kind of thing yeah yeah, and um and then they said okay I I think we really want to offer you this job can we just have a final catch-up and finalize everything on this day I said yeah okay that's great I'd love to I don't actually have availability at that time I've got another interview could we just push it back an hour or so I said oh you've got another interview I said yeah I said, oh. Because you've wasted all my time making me do some <laughs> stages. Yeah, basically, that's why. I should have said that really, shouldn't I? Yeah. Um, but they said, okay, you've got another interview. I mm, don't know how we feel about that. Your full commitment isn't with us, so we're going to have to like say goodbye here, but I wish you all the best. I thought, really? I've just been made redundant. 
I who doesn't interview in different places? Just because yeah. I'm still interviewing doesn't mean I doesn't don't want this job. I just thought it was a massive red flag. Yeah, unless you're going for something like your dream company, and you might not, but then again, you still would. I mean, you've still got all this to come, but <laughs> you wouldn't do that. Like we'd never even recommend it. Yeah. Even say if it was with one of our clients, we'd still be trying to put them with multiple people because if you only have one company then yep. you'll be always thinking at the start, oh, what, what else is out there? Then you end up looking, then you leave after three months. Yeah, exactly. So that's that was my point. I thought at the time I was really upset because I had nothing else like really lined up as much as like this one was ready to go. Um, and obviously I was really stressed about losing the apartment. So I kind of, you know, sat there and cried for a few minutes and I was very upset. And then I remembered this this side hustle that I'd seen on TikTok. Good old TikTok. Oh, but TikTok was around when you were that age. I, I literally only... This is last year. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I keep forgetting <laughs> that. I keep thinking you're like 22, 23, but I realised, yeah, it is last year. I didn't get on TikTok until it was late. I was like, I'm a mature high Yeah, that yeah me yeah. too. I was so stubborn. I was like, I'm not going on TikTok. I'm not going to do it. And then I set up a profile. It was really awkward. See, I don't post them. You tried to get me in one last year and I was like, yeah. get away from me now. Yeah. I started posting them and then I just deleted them all. All yours come Stop. up still. Don't act like you don't make them. <laughs> you make football edits, don't you? Yeah. Oh, that's sometimes. so cool. Yeah, they're quite cool though because you never know where it could go. I got like a thousand views on one of them, so I was quite oh, happy about that. That's amazing. Keep going. Yeah. Future Stephen Bartlett. Yeah, yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Or the editing world. <laughs> but then you saw it on TikTok. Yeah. And then... Side hustle. So it was like a notebook thing, like a drop shipping through Amazon, if you're familiar. Yeah, yeah do you remember yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. I didn't go through that phase, but I do remember <laughs> a lot of people going through it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, why don't I just do that? So I went on, had a look, found the video, saw how they set it all up. Um, created my Amazon reseller account, um, all that sort of stuff. I even made a website. So I started. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. Are you I just, sure? I just smiled. That was all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept it in. <laughs> Fully made a website. So it was about, I think it was about 6 p.m. when I started, or maybe earlier than that. And I didn't go to bed until 6 a.m. the following day. So I was fully, like, I was so excited. I was so passionate about this notebook business. Yeah. And, um, and then I went to bed at about 6 a.m., woke up, and I was like, okay. I don't know why I've started a notebook business because I literally, of orders, yeah, everything, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I've done it. I don't know anything about this. I don't want to like sell notebooks. I have no passion for it. So I was like, okay, what do I do best? Marketing. Literally just started the marketing agency like that. Like just, it just happened. And then I just built the business, built the website, built everything. And I just didn't look back. Like I literally just, just carried on and like yep. pivoted in certain different directions. And here I am now. Is that why it's called Pivot? It is. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, I did have a feeling that when that got dropped in there. But it, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Because I don't know many people actually think, you know what, I'm going to do this and I want to start a business. Because yeah. I left my, the recruitment agency I was working at. I can't actually really say too much about it or I'll get in trouble. But they, they don't listen to what I say. They they don't like me. But um, yeah, then I had one of their clients call me. I was like, oh, I know you're completely finished. We'll have it in writing that we want to work with you. Can you set up? And I was like, I think I was 20. I was just like sat playing PlayStation. I was like, uh, maybe like yeah and then i was like she did it and then it, it's kind of weird how it all because that was never the plan but it's just kind of weird how things and you hear it quite a lot of covid obviously your situation is quite similar that you're there like well what have i got to lose yeah except your apartment obviously you could, you could have lost <laughs> except that for everything but, else yeah but it, it is one of those and i think that's what makes the entrepreneur stronger mm. is when it's stuff like that i mean don't get me wrong they're not you're not not strong if you don't sort of plan it and everything like that but it's kind of crazy how things just happen like lewis is another prime example he's got made redundant on I think he was on a podcast. He was, yeah. Yeah, I should know this. He is one of my best mates. I should, I should really know <laughs> his story. But yeah, I remember speaking to him about it and he was like, none of this was planned because obviously travel was his big thing. Yes, and I remember. he's done Hustle now, which he always tells me off of spelling it wrong. How do you spell it? H-U-S-T-L-E. It's not like, it's H-U-S-S-E-L. Yeah. And then Even I, I know this H. And then I changed it to H-U-S-S-L-E. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It is weird way of spelling it. Um, But yeah, obviously he's background to travel and he's only just sort of managed to set that up when he's yeah. been planning that for for years now and everything like that. So can you remember winning your first client as well? Yeah, so I actually, I'll talk more about this in a moment when we jump into personal branding, but I actually didn't sign my first client for like six months. So I was building all the operational stuff and like I'd just come from, so I was doing like another job on the side where I was like building the operational systems that was going to kind of keep everything in place long term. So yep. I thought that's a really good place to start if I just build this, build out, like start marketing myself, but then not quite, like I, d I wasn't ready to take on anyone at this point. Yeah. And then 
realizing as I progressed further down the line I was actually scared to take somebody on like as a client like mm-hmm. could I do this like I'm only well I was 19 at the time so I was like yeah of course who even wants me to do their work so subconsciously this was why I didn't take people on um and then I got my first client uh social media management and um I think that was about six months in and then after that I kind of got the odd few which was nice I was starting to build it up and like do the work like at the time we were doing like SEO we were doing personal branding email marketing all that sort of stuff but we weren't really focused on the personal branding as much as we are now yeah so then come January of this year we we pivoted I love to drop that one in there (laughs) (laughs) Uh, we pivoted and we rebranded as pivot and um, we changed our main structure to be personal branding and then on the side we kind of do social media management as well so we find that branding a person um kind of generates all the leads and all the attention but then also having the corporate branding helps inform people and kind of establish that trust score a little bit more so we have that as like a secondary product but our main product is personal branding um and so um I started taking on a lot more clients this year like January of this year it kind of cascaded with my personal brand uh I think I started posting content properly January there was one post I did really well in December then I kind of went from there um and so just by posting every day I've literally managed to scale in within six months a really good amount so I've got like 15 to 20 clients now um I think I had probably like five at the start of this year and I scaled because of my personal brand literally owe it to my personal brand that I get inbound needs all the time so I get like 10 sales calls booked a week just like based on people inquiring I have my Calendly link on my LinkedIn profile so I've people just book in oh, I, used oh, get, I used to get like sales calls people booking in on it this is the pro- so what I do is I actually put a form in front of it so they you can actually if you have the upgraded version you can they can get them to fill out a form so they're qualifying themselves so people aren't usually going to put as much effort in if they're just like trying to you know, if this is pointless call. So I asked them, did Kat ask you to book this call? And then they put yes or no. Yeah. And usually that will like scare people off. Or if it says no, then we just delete them out the calendar. Um, so my lead gen process is like literally posting. They book in through the calendar link, which is now optimized so that we actually have a really strong, like credible people coming through. Yeah. And then they, um, we take the call, send them a proposal, sign the contract. So it's quite like, it's quite simple because I don't yeah, do yeah. much of it and I get somebody to send the proposals out. So from going from where I was like last year to where I am now, just solely because I'm posting like five times a week on LinkedIn, is it's pretty crazy. Yeah, and it's kind of mad because what you said at the start that when you, the first six months, you were just doing like the systems kind yeah. of and processes. I've literally only just started to do the processes and we're f- nearly four. Yeah. I just, at the start, I was like, oh, just money. That was it. I was like clients, candidates. And then I was like, I just Excel spreadsheet, like, no system, yeah. nothing like that. And then, yeah, we had to get someone in to do it because I can't do anything like that. No, I get that. And a lot of businesses start there. Like, I know a lot of people within my sort of area as well. And they they just start with taking on clients. And neither end is wrong, but you encounter different issues at this point. So I encountered having no money at the start versus they had money, but then the capacity and everything is, like, is flopped because you don't have the operations in place, whereas I had it the other way around. So although I didn't have money then, I do now have the operation, the infrastructure in place, ready to take on these clients, have everything moving, um, and have everything executed to perfection, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, so I think that that's, that's quite an important thing that I'm going to be teaching in my Young Accelerators course, which I don't know if you're familiar with, but we can dive into later. Yeah, I've heard of it. You've heard of it. Yeah, I don't know where, though. Well, like, yeah, I know, like, yeah, enterprise, obviously, that's completely different, but I know, like, kind of, I think I probably can get the gist of it. But it was you talk about leads as well, because I see a lot in the comments, which we'll go into other comments in a bit, but um, yes. a lot of people are like, oh, you don't check your inbox and stuff like that. And is there, like, I feel like you can just view their profile and be like, you're not going to be the right person f- to work with. Yeah. Because, like, we don't work with every client that wants us to do recruitment because it's just not, yeah, there's just not, not not much point, but there's some people that I'm like, I don't really want to work with you. We've got that luxury or we can kind of kind of choose really who you want to work with and I see some of the comments on there like yeah but you are in Dubai textiles company it's not really going to be what you might think is really good they might not like and then it's just constantly going to be a battle and a crash and then you're just going to think what's the point of doing this yeah absolutely it is an element of like choosing who it is and it's like kind of going through your inbox quite selectively but also at the same time these people I saw them last week they're like I haven't checked my my message I, I wanted to work with you and I'm like 
sorry, I get hundreds of DMs every yeah. day. I don't have the capacity right now to answer every single one of them. I try to, and I would love to be able to, but I just, I can't. And I thought people would be maybe a bit more understanding to that, but apparently not. No, people <laughs> aren't understanding on, on LinkedIn. It's, it is a weird place. Like, obviously, we, we were speaking about it last night because you, you haven't been on it and I was letting you know a little bit about it and stuff like that and you were just a bit like it just sounds a bit weird really um, <laughs> so I was saying like, on my network it's, it's so weird I've got like ex-footballers like really like Premier League level ones and then just got like just random like admins somewhere and it's just like it's such a weird audience where like none of my audience is exactly the same where like we're trying to find candidates all the time and, and everything like that but it is it can be a weird place especially if you're quite young though because I have it sometimes well where a lot of the people on LinkedIn are double our age realistically yes. um oh this isn't facebook yeah okay yeah. cool no one cares like it's yeah it's a tricky one as well because people buy from people right that's that's the big thing like, we just want a new client it's like household household name just from us posting like, we do a lot of videos all in here yeah. of like, us like reading mean tweets about recruiters and we just have a laugh about it like piss about in these videos realistically have a laugh about it and everyone seems to really like them mm. and then we get new clients from it but then we get loads of people saying this isn't serious and I'm like it's not supposed to be <laughs> like oh, I'm not a serious person it's like suits I think your mum made you bring loads of smart clothes yeah. and you saw what I was wearing this morning you were like okay I'm not going to wear smart clothes <laughs> so, but like, we, I won't wear a suit for any meeting like it's just not what we are and in fact that's kind of the brand that we've put around it and what we're kind of operating as like no what I'd, so who would wear a suit in this weather it is, like yeah, 40, it's 40 degrees. I think the problem with LinkedIn is that there's an, there's like a general generational divide. So yeah. you've got the people who were on it before and like that's been their platform for like years and years. And now you've got all these young people who are bringing new, fresh perspectives in. Um, and there's like a clash going on at the moment because it's like, we don't want this. It's like, well, we don't want this. And it's like this this whole like middle situation which is where that you get the like I don't want this on my feed or something because this isn't Facebook but no it's not Facebook but it's the new era of LinkedIn and things don't change unless you change them like we're supposed to be changing and evolving all the time we shouldn't just be static and not progressing and so I think it's important for the LinkedIn app to have these new perspectives there because Otherwise, it's just boring and long term, the app is going to just die. And so that's why I think LinkedIn is loving this kind of content right now, because it's going to be long term. It's going to be very beneficial for them. Well, you look at it, who keeps getting invited to LinkedIn to the office? Ah, uh, yeah. The kind of people that are there. Like we spoke at an event for LinkedIn, it was in April now, um, all about young offenders coming out, ex-offenders. And it was this massive event. I feel like Levi Roots was there as well. But there was quite a lot of the young young people there speaking at it. And we are speaking to a lot of the people that are quite senior at LinkedIn and they're trying to move away from that. Is that whole big thing while they're getting involved in different projects now? So they love that kind of stuff, but then there's still that kind of generation that thinks, oh, this is what LinkedIn is. It's like, well, no, actually, they're trying to change that. Yeah. So you're actually, wrong. Well, going go on Bebo or MySpace or something. <laughs> you can <laughs> stick to like old. I mean, Bebo's coming back though. Is it? Yeah, it's been Used supposed to, to be me. coming back for years. Okay. But apparently they are actually... But you can't get your old, old profiles. Did you ever have Bebo? I didn't know. You missed that. Dude. I wasn't cool enough. No. <laughs> uh, you don't, do you even know what Bebo is? No. It was, it was before, like, Facebook. But, like, you had, like, a music video that played on your profile as soon as, like, you clicked on it and, like, you'd have, like... A, I'll educate you later. I'll show <laughs> you it. That's weird. But loads of old footballers' Bebo accounts keep getting, like, popping up, like, Jordan Henderson, like, Deli Alley, people like that, where they used to post, like, really cringy photos and stuff like that. Now it keeps getting, like, resurfaced and stuff. But that is that is the big issue with it. And I think that's probably what a lot of people in the comments on mm. your stuff, which we'll get into in a sec, yeah. um, keep forgetting that it doesn't always stick, sort of. Like, every, everything's changed. But we even, to be fair, I think there's some that are actually quite welcome into the idea and they are changing with the times, but it's the ones that have seven connections. This isn't Facebook. And it's yeah. Like, is this a real account? Yeah. Is the other thing that I always think because I think there does need to be steps to make sure that these are genuine people. Like mm. I, I see people with their dogs having LinkedIn. I'm not. Yeah, no. I know. Like, it just cracks me up. To be fair, like Tilly hasn't got LinkedIn, but <laughs> she should have LinkedIn. Yeah, she's dead. Oh, there she you are should. saying that you don't like these people with dogs on their profiles. Oh, Tilly should have LinkedIn. Though. Tilly should she's have special LinkedIn. dog. <laughs> Tilly's on the website. She's <laughs> chief of terror. Uh, Tilly, Tilly's great. Um, but yeah, the, the, I'm, I'm all for like the LinkedIn ones. That's just funny because that's like a funny fake profile, isn't it? But the ones that are on there just to be troll and stuff. You get a lot of recruiter ones. Yeah. You get a lot. Um, I don't really know why. It's just like people that are just really sour. Mm. With us, it's like if people doesn't get, if people don't get a job and it was their dream job, they then hate recruiters. 
<laughs> and then they just get targeted. Like every single recruit gets targeted by one bad experience. So it's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit weird. But so post Sonic Dinner, obviously you post every day. You know, what couple of tips would you give someone that wants to start posting every day? Mm, great question. Yeah. So the biggest thing that I see people doing is that they want they post every single day out of nowhere, and so because everybody who's kind of like they've grown their personal brand they're now posting every day like it doesn't mean you have to start out like that so with my clients we post three times a week and that's good enough to kind of generate that demand so I actually started posting only three times a week like I didn't start out posting every single day because like not everybody wants to hear from you until you've kind of grown and established your personal brand right so I'd I'd start by posting three times a week if possible obviously kind of make you have to make sure that it's valuable content but obviously what's meant by valuable content while well, something that you would read yourself right yeah. so that's that's where I'd start um the next thing is like defining why so why do you want to build a personal brand what do you actually want to be known for mm-hmm. so do you want to be like that recruiter guy do you want to be like the funny recruiter guy like what kind of what tone are you going to take with your messaging yeah so when you decide like all of these the key starting points for your personal brand it's going to be more sustainable long term because you're not just putting random pieces of content out there you're actually deciding what you want to be about um so that that's the starting point of where i take my my clients through the journey yeah what you want to be known for what you're going to be talking about therefore which we call content pillars uh so i have three content pillars which is personal branding slash marketing, mm-hmm. entrepreneurship and personal growth. Okay. And those are relevant to me because I enjoy talking about those topics. So it doesn't mean that they're good or bad. They're just what I enjoy talking about. So we do also have people who talk about, um, I don't know, it could be like the wellness industry or it could be uh, to do with like ADHD or something. It's whatever's relevant to their personal brand and their identity, whatever they enjoy talking about, that's what you should talk about. So starting points are those points exactly posting like consistently Mm -hmm. and so defining what consistency is is where people struggle yeah so consistency isn't posting every single day for like five years and whatever else it is it's 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 also like the time that you're posting so see a lot of people just posting at random points throughout the day um and whilst that is it's not necessarily bad it's just when you start out you want to be you want to have a bit more of a targeted strategy so that you can grow so I post at 8.30 every single morning, uh, every, like Monday to Friday, uh, and that works really well for me. Whereas I have, um, like, well, Lewis, he posts at 3 p.m. now, um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's his, like, that's his time because he started does he posting then. he do that on purpose, then. or does he just, I, I feel like he just said, like, oh, yeah. Like, he doesn't do it on purpose, yeah. to be fair to him, but he did start doing it, and then I just said, just keep doing it at that time because you've, you've started and you've grown an audience who are there at 3 p.m. now. Yeah. So, like, just... Being consistent is also, t- you know, picking your timings, but also the, the sort of messaging and the tone of your delivery. Mm. So a lot of things with like, even with TikTok, for example, like people have the same sort of intros because it's it's getting that regularity and consistency with who you are. Yeah. So people recognize who you are with the style. So those would probably be my starting points. Um, and then the gold one, obviously, is engaging with other people and actually forging connections, um, which is which is the biggest part because a lot of people ghost and post, which is yep. the worst thing to ever do because nobody's going to want to engage with somebody like that. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because you see a lot of people do it. I feel like there's a lot of like engagement pods on LinkedIn, isn't there? And I think it's so obvious. when. No, I didn't even it. know that was a thing. Genuinely, really? I feel like I'm quite naive. I didn't know that was a thing. It's a bit like the equivalent on Instagram, isn't it? Of like buying, buying like, like someone that I know, yeah. I, I was with him the other week and he actually says he listens to this but he's blocked me on Instagram now because I said that I feel like he does that and he does it, right? But he'll like buy loads of comments and it'll be like, you're inspiring, you're this, you're that. I'm a selfie and I'm like, mate, like, it's not. But it'll be like a thousand comments uh. and I'm like, like really big profiles don't get that and he's got like, like 300,000 followers and he's saying, oh, it's increased by 200,000 in a week. I was like, what car details did you put in on that one? Like it's, <laughs> it's weird. But then obviously cause you you can it's quite obvious I think on LinkedIn when it's like thanks for commenting, this is inspiring, great, wow, and stuff like that. And you're there like, well, no, you're not actually. Thanks for sharing. That's the big one that I'm there like. Ten people have put that like third mm. plus connections and stuff like that of someone that's just like local that hasn't really posted a lot that just suddenly has a post that goes. Yeah, big. yeah. I feel like it does damage your personal brand quite a lot when yeah. you see, there's a few people that I think you definitely do. 100%. Like. I need to have a look at these. You need to show me later because I'm very naive to this kind of side of things. Um, but you do also get a lot of people in the same circle. So yeah. within my circle, I have a lot of like content creators as well like who post on LinkedIn. So we all kind of just engage with each other's stuff naturally, like if we yeah, agree exactly. with it, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I guess 
there's probably there might be an element of that, but you definitely have to show me that later. Yeah, I'll, sh- I'll show. You, I mean, I'll show you the people's posts on about. Like, I get it as well. Like if I post, I like, might just drop it to a few mates. Like oh yeah, like, yeah. like Lewis, like Lewis, yeah, me and Lewis do it with each other. Like, <laughs> with, like, yeah, I've posts. noticed that. Yeah, 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 within like minutes, we both like liked and commented. So, but yeah, it's just more like supporting your mates. That is, yeah, it's a little bit different than like trying to get like random people in India just to like it and comment on it and stuff like that. Like, we yeah. with um, but it's crazy how like a post can blow up like that. Like we, oh, one of our posts was trending in India. When someone was recruiting, they said we're hiring, and we had like hundreds of welders commenting on it, saying like, "Yeah, I'm a welder looking for work." And we're like, "It's for a recruitment consultant role." Like, what is happening? <laughs> but it just—it's a bit wild. But it does get gets a bit crazy. But talking about crazy, obviously, you did a post the other week, didn't you? And it was it last week? It was, yeah, last Monday. Yeah, about like an Uber driver and everything like that. Yeah. And you laughing? Hey. You laughing at? <laughs> 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 and it, I feel like people took it out of context yeah massively um and i feel like some people would just want to be honest with absolute dickheads about it there's no real there's no way. sugar coating it yeah yeah there's not i mean the geese with the hairy chest <laughs> uh, 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 yeah i uh, don't even know what to say about that one yeah kind we'll get made me a bit sick to be honest um yeah but there was one in like colorado and you look at that and you think right your post now has caught the attraction of someone on the other side of the world that's then mocking it if anything up really aren't they and then posting about it and you think how has it upset you that much or annoyed you that much that you felt the need to to redo the post and or someone edited it on a video did you see that one i try not to look yeah to be honest because it was a very upsetting week i'm gonna i'm not gonna sugarcoat it it was a very dark week for me yeah someone did like a l'oreal advert or something, and i was like you've so, actually put a lot of time wow. into this like it's a bit it was a bit strange because I mean, me and jack were sat in the office and we were like it's a bit weird and i was like i might just do a quick post being there like you just or bellends basically that yeah, are doing it that. and stuff like that and i think more people need to do that to bring awareness to the situation and yeah. also being like me being in this sort of situation myself it's also nice to see other people supporting you rather than the people that are tearing you down because people go quite quiet and they message you privately which is lovely yeah, yeah. but people aren't like talking about it enough publicly and showing this public appreciation so when people like you do that or when lewis did that or when other people do that it actually means a lot more than you realize because mm. how what what did you feel like when that was all going on because obviously there was quite a few different posts and, and the comments and stuff like that and i saw people liking your posts supporting you then liking some of the posts did you yeah and i was like I was wow like, yeah i was a bit like that's a bit bit ridiculous really but then i feel like there's certain people on linkedin that just want to agree with everything just to yeah, get their name out there and, and everything like that but what was sort of going through your head like how was how was that week well the monday i made the post um seemed fine it there wasn't really much going on and then it kind of blew up past about 8k or something it's currently on twenty thousand reactions and like three and a half million people have seen it so you can imagine like yeah it was a pretty tough week right um so it was basically me talking about a situation. I went to an event last week, uh, no, the week before, sorry, and um, and I got into this Uber with this guy, and I, I'm walking up to so he can see me. Bef- like you know, sometimes you're going through the side, so I'm walking up, and he's watching me, and I'm like, oh, I feel uncomfortable already. Yeah. I got into the to the taxi, and he goes, um, "Are you a model?" Like straight away, doesn't say hi. She goes, "Are you a model?" I was like, "No, no, no. I'm I'm just on my way to a business meeting." Yeah. He goes, "Okay." Like, well, you should be a model. What, like, why Why are you bothering with business? And I was like, because I like it. It's what I do. And he kind of, like, went into this before we pulled off. And then, like, he finally kind of, like, dropped the situation. It was like, are you going to this place? You know, the usual, like, is this your name sort of thing. Um, and so I just thought it wasn't, it wasn't that deep. But I just thought I know that there's been huge amount of, like, issues within that area because it's not the first time I've encountered it right and it wasn't something that I was like deeply traumatized about but I was using that as an example for things that have happened within um within my professional life ongoing um so wrote about it and uh forgetting that there are of course plenty of uh, generational mixes on there and a lot of johns I like to call them yeah yeah (laughs) and so uh I think when a post goes past a certain point of like virality obviously it gets pushed out to second and third connections and these guys don't know anything about you they don't know what you stand for your values your morals that you're actually a nice human being um and so they just assume a bunch of things about you and so because of that 
obviously you've got all these people assuming that like I'm just like this person who's really far up my own you know up myself and like oh you think you're pretty oh god oh god god help you for being so pretty or and it's just like that was so far from my point that I was making and it made me quite upset because then you've got all these people assuming these things about me that I don't think are true and because of that it 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 hurts more so you're there trying to like defend yourself and you're thinking okay is it worth it and so I when it gets past a certain point right of of, engagement I have so I have a PA Mm -hmm. and she manages um my LinkedIn comments most of the times um and like all the other side of things with LinkedIn so I just said okay can you can you deal with this stuff and she said she started screenshotting a few things she sent to me she said oh what do I put back to this I was like oh that's not very nice I was like "I, I don't think you should respond to that um left it at that I said you know what it's blown up so much let's just leave it let's just not look at anything next day I make another post about goodness knows what personal branding or something then I made another point another post about the post on Monday and I think that's where it got really bad because all the haters from that post were like coming over to here and they're like no not again and like then then they started started escalating from there yeah so I mistakenly did look at a few of the comments which is where the mistake came from me because I don't look at them purposely because I get upset by a lot of them because they j- they go in on you personally yeah, to attack nasty. you. Yeah, 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 rather than disagreeing with the post, they they fully go in on you. And it's not just in the comments. They DM you, they call you, they email you. Did it's, someone call you about it? Yeah, it's harassment. It's awful. Like, it's genuinely awful. Mm. Um, and, and looking at one post, people don't realise how bad it gets, um, but it gets really bad. And then it's not just that, but it's also thinking that the world hates you. Yeah. So I'm there thinking, do all my friends think the same? Do all the people that I know in business? What about my clients? Are they going to drop me? Do they agree with that? Like, have I messed everything up? Yeah, and so course. these thoughts are all going through your mind. You can't read other people's minds. And I don't really want to go talk about it with everybody. So I start getting a lot of hate from this. And then I saw a few posts that people had sent me, like that guy with a hairy chest that you, you mentioned. Yeah, he's done. A, he, did a, he did two of them. Did he do two? Yeah, he did another one. God. But, but, but like, didn't have his hairy chest out this time. <laughs> that, I didn't see that one. You don't want to look, but no, I don't want to. No, look. yeah, but it's I, yeah, I don't get it. But you said you've met him. This is the pr- this is the thing that really upset me about that one. First of all, he's got like thirty six k, right? So he's actually a person of influence. Oh yeah, but like, there's a few of them that were. That's what is even yeah. more disappointing about uh, yeah someone else as well. Yeah, yeah, it's very disappointing. And so I went to a conference, uh, September of last year, I believe, and it was called the Entrepreneur Circle. And I don't know if you're familiar with it. Okay. I, s- I stay away from those kind of events. It's actually really informative. I, my, my, I, I'm not going to molly my and say it's minuscule in my circle, but a lot of my, I still like a lot of my childhood friends and like yeah. a few a few of them and then like Lewis and that lot. I don't really... Like yeah. He wanted me to come up to the networking thing and I was just a bit like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to send the parks the next day. I was like, get out of it that way. But I, I don't really like any of those events because I just think people are so far at their own arses. <laughs> I can see that. Fair play. Yeah. I can, especially with what I'm about to say. But yeah, so this guy was on the stage um, and I kind of remembered him because he, like he... The way he just was, I don't know. He, I think he, do I name drop? Shall I just steer away from that? I mean, because <laughs> I don't really have his name, but I know him, what he goes by. Yeah, no, I know it. Yeah, I mean, you can say his name as well if you want. Oh, he goes by like being like hated on. Right, he calls himself the most hated sales guy or something like that. Um, Facts. We can, yeah. yeah. That's his name, isn't <laughs> it? Yeah. But maybe, maybe we'll figure out if we cut out or not. But anyways, um, so this guy. I literally watched him on stage, like giving a talk, which I thought was actually quite informative at the time. And I thought, this this is actually pretty good. Um, Didn't really think too much of it. I'm pretty sure I met him afterwards. I just said hi. Um, He seemed like a nice person. You know, there wasn't anything major. Didn't really remember him that much after the event. Um, Then I see this post. Somebody send it to me in DM because I'm steering clear of all of these things. And they send it to me by DM. And I'm like, oh God, okay. I didn't want to open this. Have a look at it. It's actually got like seven or 800 reactions. I'm like, okay this isn't good and then I'm like where do I know him from click onto his profile his tagline obviously mentions what he does I'm like oh my god I actually know this guy like I've yeah. met this guy in person and and now he's hating on me and like full, like he's made a post he's put a towel on his head or whatever he's or around I don't know what he's done but he's gone through a lot of effort to make yeah, this post yeah I mean he could have plaid his hair <laughs> hairy chest couldn't he but it, 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 it what makes me not laugh and everything it's just I was being a jack about it at work and I said to him, I was like, right, okay, now, so if I was someone that went and viewed on his profile and he was reaching out to me about doing sales training, I'd be like, well, I'm not using you. Like, look at the what you're doing to that. Someone that is literally, you, if you knew it was you, it says 20-year-old young entrepreneur straight away. And I'm like, you're picking on a 20-year-old. Yeah. You've probably got kids. 
similar age. And I'm there like, would I want that person around my team? Yeah, I no. agree. And it's it's been really hard because like for that reason. So at the start of the week, I'm thinking like, everyone hates me and then towards the end of the week I'm seeing more posts like yours and people are like actually are kind of like trying to support me publicly and so it kind of it's been turning around and this week like I'm doing a campaign with LinkedIn um, to try and prevent all of this stuff and so we're doing a lot of a lot more a lot more things to kind of kind of paint me in more of a positive light now and it, it's transpired I guess for the best because I've got a story to tell but it was a really awful week and seeing things like that like it it really I didn't do I don't think I took any calls last week I had to cancel most of them like I was really yeah. really upset and I only managed to like pick myself up because of posts like you guys so mm. so when you say you're doing stuff with LinkedIn cause obviously this is going to come out for like three four weeks oh uh, yes so it, it will have uh it will have all happened now so you're doing something actually with them fine so they've got if anything they're kind of like backing it a little bit so yeah that anyone that's on there that says this isn't Facebook this isn't appropriate for LinkedIn what it's like well hang on <laughs> What's that then? Exactly, yeah. So I'm very close with like the team because we have like creator managers, um, like when you get to be a creator, I guess, on the platform. So um, our, my creator manager, Ash, shout out to Ash. Mm. Uh, he, I literally messaged him yesterday. I've been messaging him like a lot of the comments that have gone on. And he's been like flagging it and stuff like that um, because it's actually really quite upsetting. So I think that some of the accounts are apparently like under investigation or something. Um, One of the accounts got banned. Did they? Yeah. Is no, no, no. As in last year, it got banned. Okay. And it got banned from LinkedIn for a year because of a certain thing that he does, exposing people. Oh, he got wow. banned for ages. And okay. Then the account's back now. So That's he must probably have lifted, why. Li his ban got lifted, I think, and then... Okay. Because this guy... We'll jump back into the LinkedIn stuff in a sec. But this guy, he, um, he left a comment which... It was, it was, it did actually really upset me and it got like 300 reactions or something. But then it was also the comments he was putting on under, under everyone else's posts. Like, oh, I wish I would have thought of this, I wish I wouldn't that. And I think he kept commenting on the other posts. And so it really upset me. So obviously I popped it into that, that little file that I made and sent to LinkedIn um, to like report these guys. Um, I didn't do that, by the way. My team did that because I couldn't look through these comments. Yeah, yeah, of course. I did look through them and I was like, wow, some of them are like... It's awful. And you, you kind of laugh a little bit thinking, why would you even say that? Yeah. And it's not like a laugh, like, ha, ha, ha I agree. It's like, yeah. Why? Yeah, it's right. almost like, ridiculous. You can't, it's yeah. unfathomable. How, how do you, how? And how do you even type that and press send? And thought, you know what, that's a really good comment. Let's, <laughs> let's put that out there. Yeah. So this guy, all right, so I block him. I delete, I, I don't What's know. What's his initials? Oh, I could find a few. I can't remember now. I've got a feeling I, I think know. it's the guy that you mentioned in the voice note. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't remember what his name is now. Yeah, yeah. We won't say it because no. yeah, I can't be bothered for it. <laughs> I can't be bothered for it. But yeah. yeah so that, you know. Yeah, that guy. Um, I got my, my PA to like go through and delete some of the comments, block these people and then turn off the comments because I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I was like on the floor. Um, and uh, and so she, she goes through, she does it all. And so he, this guy's blocked now, right? Mm. So he sends a DM to somebody who I don't even know that well, but she must have commented on my like content and stuff and like probably seen that we have a bit of like a relationship. She's lovely. Um, she, he, he DMs her and says, is Kat okay? Like, um, I've, uh, I was trying to be helpful. And I'm like, helpful, helpful. Okay. Okay. It's like, I genuinely wasn't like, if you look at my comment, it wasn't that bad. I was like, there are other comments. It's not just one comment. Right. And he goes, um, if she wants any tax advice, I can see her accounts are due soon. So get, tell her to give me a call on this number. And like, he's trying to make this relationship. And I think it's because he doesn't want his account to get banned. So I'm like, this is weird. This is a weird turn of events. Like this guy goes it's from the, hating. I think it's the same guy that we're on about. Yeah, yeah, but that's weird. Like, it's just a bit, I don't, that's what I mean. Like, I don't really get it. And then you it's get weird. scared and you realise, oh shit. Yeah, I'm get I could actually, now. yeah. Because a lot of people's businesses are on LinkedIn, all of it. Well, that's the thing I find really weird. Why people should, well, why people are going to be, first of all, hating in the first place, but also it's attached to your public profile, who, yeah. which has your company stuff on there. Well, that's that's why I don't like Twitter. Mm. I think Twitter is really negative. Yeah, uh, I, I use it for like, football transfers. So that's, that's about it, like keeping up to date with like Reading and stuff <laughs> like that. But other than that, I hate it because of the negativity, but I feel mm. like LinkedIn is kind of going in that direction it is and that's why i think like linkedin are really making a big thing out of this so they're, they're working with a lot of creators on this 
um, and I've been particularly flagging all this stuff because of that. So I've got I've got a few ideas for a campaign. So this morning I did a giveaway for like my 50k, um, and that was like a day with me, and I'll spend whatever you want me to do on your business, like whatever it is, and I'll pay for your hotel and all sorts of things like that. So I'm doing a nice little giveaway there. And then my friend actually came with the idea yesterday while we were at Alton Towers. She goes, um, "Why don't you do this?" So basically. My initial thoughts hasn't been finalised yet, but we're gonna get we're gonna have like a trending hashtag that's like I am kind or like something like that, um, and people are gonna start posting about like being kind in some way. Mm. Figure out the messaging, obviously, at some point, point. Um, and then um, it's gonna kind of like take over LinkedIn a little bit, so we have more positivity on people's feeds, and then also people are gonna be steering away from hopefully being negative for like the next few weeks um and then the give up that the actual giveaway is that we're going to be donating a certain amount of money to charity and then to like a bullying or harassment sort of charity or something like that um yeah so those are like the the initial thoughts but like i said we haven't finalized everything yet um and i do actually have a call with ash later so we're we're probably finalizing it then um but you'll see it you'll probably will have seen it by the time this comes out and yeah. it's going to be something along those lines so i do have to say the team at linkedin are actually really helpful Brilliant. the social media marketing manager i can't remember her name now she came to the event chris. i think the head up no, her name, oh, what was her name no it wasn't chris i can't remember her name that's really bad and then you had zara came come as well who was like the partnerships manager or something yeah and they were lovely they were they great are. yeah and i don't think they obviously they don't like any of the stuff that goes on so the fact that they're all being supportive to it and everything like that, I think it's just... It's amazing. And, you know, that's the one thing I love about LinkedIn. You get Instagram, you get Facebook, and all the people there, like, they're so untouchable. Yeah. But LinkedIn are so friendly and so down-to-earth, and, like, they actually want to help the creators on the platform and yeah. keeping it a nice place. And that's what I think separates them as a social media platform is that they, they're so willing to, like, to help people and mm. actually bringing a lot of change. So they're going to be bringing a load of new features, like a new reporting method, possibly some changes to the messages and stuff like that um and just like the spam filters and stuff just to like kind of try and prevent a little bit more of this harassment and stuff that goes on and i think that's brilliant mm. yeah no that is so we'll get on to the spike part which is obviously the whole point of the podcast as well i don't want to give the, the dickheads on linkedin any more yes. clout than they deserve <laughs> won't be naming people except the keys of the hair so just <laughs> send him some like wax strips or something like that as a little present <laughs> I wouldn't care yeah. I don't know uh, that's for you to do not for me I'm not sending him anything um, especially not that I don't want to have to thought in my thought in my head but so the whole point about the podcast um, is obviously to find out what your spike would be so your spike is something that's like unique to you that's kind of helped you stand out in business in your personal life and everything like that so George are you going to ask it? so I guess like my USP uh, that's probably like my age um before I would see it as a disadvantage I'd be like oh my god I'd hide my age I'd try and like kind of do things to make me seem older um I'd literally never wear trainers so I made a post about that like last year I saw year. that did yeah, you see yeah, that yeah, one yeah. yeah and I just thought I'd never wear trainers because I didn't want to look young younger than I was because I have to like almost prove myself even more being so young um so as of like when I got those trainers I actually changed my headline to 20 years old so people knew how old I was and that's now like my USP I'd say is like being so young but still being able to overcome all these things and actually uh you know build a business and scale the business to where it is now um I'd say that's what it is but also I am bringing change in other areas of of the world I suppose um so the marketing agency I love marketing and obviously the personal branding um but long term I'm building up a and a, like a set a sub brand called young accelerators okay and that's going to be helping young people getting into the workforce or starting their entrepreneurial career nice. um and so it's kind of you know we talked earlier about soft skills yeah that's the main thing we're going to focus on initially is building up those soft skills that you need to succeed in any walk of life uh things that aren't necessarily taught in schools and then we're going to have all the other things like you said tax advice and all these things that aren't taught in schools but should be taught in schools so I'm building that up right now as we speak. It's going to start with a course, then it's going to be an e-learning platform and a community. And it's going to be like people who, you know, bounce off each other. Like it's nice to have a place that everybody can feel like the same. So like LinkedIn, for example, for me, I found my place because everybody that I'm connected with is doing the same sort of thing and it kind of pushes me to keep going. And whereas I think when you're young, you don't have this accessible to you you just have your friendship group and that's it yeah and so having a little community like that will be really helpful for a lot of people to start growing and thriving so that's the main purpose with that and then I'd like to get that implemented into like the school curriculum somewhere in, in a couple of schools and branch out um, and then 
long, long, long term, maybe make like my own school. <laughs> oh, okay. I know someone else wants to do something like that. They're doing quite a lot of weird, yeah? a lot of work. I'll, I'll introduce you to him as well. Yeah, please do. Uh, he came on last season. Um, for, like Lord Sugar's like got involved with it and stuff like that, saying about how like, how great he thinks it is and everything like that. Okay. So it's quite. I think you've had quite a good conversation about it. But I do relate to you about the age thing because I used to do that. I used to always hide it because I was twenty. Yeah, I was twenty. And all the other recruitment agency found us like 30 plus and stuff yeah. like that. So I always used to hide it. And then it got to a point where I was like, do you know what? Because it always used to come up in meetings. I might as well embrace it. And then no one else is going to see it as a negative anymore. If mm. I'm seeing it as a positive. Yeah. And I'm flexing it, if anything. Oh, that's my age. No one else is going to be like, oh, that's a bad thing. Because if I'm so confident about it and so passionate about it, then people can be like, oh, I really like how he's quite young. So exactly, I do, I do know what you mean. But last question to wrap things up. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe last question. Um, uh, dinner guest. Yeah. Three people, dead or alive. I'm not saying one of mine because I'm not getting backlash again. Um, <laughs> so uh, who who would you pick? Oh my God, okay. Dead or alive can be anyone. Okay, I'm going to People either go this. really emotional or they go like childhood heroes or they go like people they just want to speak to. Hmm. You have to think about yours as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about this for a sec. Who would yours be, George? The Ipswich players or something? Probably Daryl Murphy, just because he's <laughs> like... Ipswich, personally, an Ipswich legend. And then, like, young Philly, just because he seems like a good time. <laughs> and then, I don't know about the last one. Daryl, I knew you were going to pick an Ipswich player. He's not an Ipswich player anymore. Ed Sheeran? No. <laughs> totally it's really throwing you off, oh, isn't it? Yeah. Got my last one, Pete, <laughs> Pete Davidson. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. I quite like him, to be fair. So he's just quite funny. Mm. Would you have him and Kanye? Uh, that would be funny. I wouldn't want to be there, but I'd want to watch it. Oh, I'd want to be there. Just I'd like stand far away with like a camera. Um, the other people I was thinking of were like people like Steve Jobs and stuff like that. Mm. Um, just as kind of, I rather than having them at dinner, I'd like to see like their journey, like kind of like in a in a video or something just watch watching a documentary with yeah them. like a doc yeah exactly and just watching all of the struggles and how like watching how they overcame these things rather than having them to dinner yeah. um i do think that yours yours is a brilliant one just going just seeing like how people even like think of what to say with these yeah. negativity and just thinking of the, the from a psychological stance right like what actually went through their mind so yeah there we go those are my two, three two trials and a solicitor there we go there you go. <laughs> but no, it's been great when you won. Um, speaking about everything, and thanks for opening up as well. I know it's not always the easiest thing to do. It's everything. not, but no. you made it easy, so thank you. I think you really enjoyed it. How's that for you, George, as well? Uh, I thought it was quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you've got one this week as well, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs>